Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. It is beautiful here in central Pennsylvania. I've actually been able to come outside, I'm wearing a t-shirt. I just saw my first cardinal of the year here in the backyard. Super excited. And so today, we're going to talk about drop away rest. We're going to talk about cable activated, cable actuated, and limb driven rest. And all the ins and outs, price points, and differences, and should you be shooting one or the other. So we'll start through this list going from the cheapest to the most expensive option, and uh, this is going to draw out the well do you need the most expensive option uh, mostly the most expensive option is going to be your limb driven stuff uh, and that's just due to all the inner mechanical workings of it and how it uh, activates and how it works compared to a cable driven system it's just a little bit more expensive to uh, machine all those parts and then certain rests the further you go up are meant to be used for target archery and they're trying to get every ounce of tolerance out of those rests so that they drop exactly the same each and every single time because when you're trying to like for indoor spots you're trying to hit something the size of an American penny at 20 yards 30 60 90 times in a row they want your rest to be as accurate and dropping exactly the same as possible so any misses are your fault and not your equipment so let's dive right in the first rest we have here is a cable activated rest and what that means is that the cable from the bow that goes down you typically is your bus cable is what it's usually called your bus cable activates this rest so when it pulls on the cord that controls the arm, the launcher arm, as it goes down, it lifts it up, and as the bow comes back to brace when you shoot it, it quickly goes out of the way, and your arrow is able to pass through. Cable activated rests are by far your cheapest option. Uh, they are going to be easy to make, easy to manufacture. This is an NAP Nighthawk. I found it on eBay, I think, for like 25 30 bucks. That's pretty cheap for a rest, although I've used a lot of NAP products in the past, broadheads and rests, so I knew I was getting a quality product from a really upstanding company in the archery industry but this cable activated rest is very simple you have a lot of plastic parts uh, this housing is a plastic molded kind of rubber uh, your arm uh, your connecting arm is a little bit weird it's like a flared shape instead of straight so it's kind of hard to line up straight uh, your inner workings are going to be a spring steel so remember this is just staying down all the time so it means it's constantly under tension and of course when you're able to pull it up it pulls it up now when it comes to cable activated rest you can get high-end models so for example NAP makes the NAP Apache which is all a tool system all these uh uh, Allen bolts are all actually on the tool list, so they're actually just little knobs like a wing nut. You can loosen them and then you can move your rest in and out without ever having to pick up an Allen key. That's pretty nice. Uh, but most of these rests are manufactured to be cheaper and they're manufactured to be towards that budget minded market. So you're going to see a lot of different companies making cable activated rests. I know Trophy Taper makes them, NAP makes them. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of different models out there. You can go really as cheap as you'd like. Um, I bought this rest as a backup and my wife used it for quite quite some time. There's nothing wrong with it. It shoots just fine. And for the vast majority of us archers, using a cable activated rest like this is not going to hurt our accuracy. We really are not shooting, particularly hunting arrows with broadheads and all that sort of stuff, and 20 yards and in. We're not going to see that much of a difference in our group sizes if we shot a different style, like a cable actuated or a limb driven rest. So, speaking of cable actuated, it works just like a cable activated, but instead of the cable activating the whole method or the whole travel of the arm of the rest, a cable actuated is able to click into place. So this is a ripcord rest. You can also get a QAD. Those are very popular for having this in this upright position. So this is now clicked into place and it's going to stay here until I draw the bow and fire the arrow. Now you have two different types of cable actuated. So cable actuated where it goes back and just put that little bit of pressure and that sear clicks over and then the rest falls out of the way. Just just like that or in the case of the QAD and I'll pull it up here in a second when you pull on that if it doesn't go quickly it actually doesn't fall out of the way so this is where I like a cable actuated more than a cable activated because think of it this way if you go and you pull that cable activated rest out if you come to full draw in a hunting situation you pull that arrows up out of the way but now you have to let down now you're trying to let down slowly and now you're giving your arrow a chance to bounce and that aluminum arrow or that carbon arrow against that aluminum riser unless you have a whole bunch of uh, deadening material and you have an arrow rest down here or an arrow catcher arrow holder it's going to make some noise and we don't want that to happen when we have a deer at 15 20 yards so when you have a cable actuated rest where it's able to stay up the entire time so you come to full draw you can uh, come to full draw 
and you don't actually create the shot, the arm won't go down. Now that is the downfall, I think, with this ripcord. Now I did shoot both my deer with this ripcord rest last year. I don't have a single problem with it. Uh, but both I was able to draw back and then take the shot. I did not have to let down. So this will stay in the upright position. My arrow won't fall out, which is nice. But if I am going to pull on this cord by drawing the bow, it's going to clear out of the way whether I want it to or not. So here we have my wife's bow, which has a QAD HDX on it. As you can see, it's in the upright position. This rest will stay in the upright position the entire time unless the bow is quickly fired. So there's a tab over here. If I do want it to let it down, I can simply pull it and flick it and then it clears out of the way. But in an event where it's just a slow movement like this, and it's just the actuation of me letting the bow down because I didn't need or couldn't take the shot, it's not gonna drop out of the way and it's not gonna allow my arrow to clank all around the riser. So now that you're getting all machine parts, you're getting steel and aluminum, very little plastic on these cable actuated rests, you're gonna start seeing the price point go up. 70, 80, 90, $100 or more. QAD and Ripcord are probably two of the most high-end known ones. Trophy Taker, I believe, also makes a, a cable actuated one. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with bumping up to that extra price point for this ability to have the arrow up in a hunting situation. Now for indoor shooting or just flinking around in the backyard, there's no problems with that. You can shoot a cable activated rest. You don't care if you make a little noise because you got to let down. And quite frankly, you don't really expect to let down if you're just kind of shooting around the range or shooting in your backyard. You're just expecting to pull it back and let her fly. But in a hunting situation, if you've hunted long enough, you will know that eventually you're going to have a situation where you're going to have to let down. Now last year was an anomaly for me. Both the deer that I drew on, I was able to take the shot immediately. That has not been the case the past four, five, six years prior to that. There have been issues where I've had to draw the deer as moved and I've had to let down, go around the other side of the tree, or I've had to let down in order to get my weight out of my tree stand. There's lots of different scenarios where you're going to have to do that. And shooting an activated, or excuse me, cable actuated rest that's going to stay upright. Now, there's anything wrong with this ripcord, but that QAD HDX, in my opinion, for a cable actuated rest is the bee's knees. And last but certainly not least, you have limb driven rests and this particular one is a hamski now limb driven rests in general are more expensive just because of the machining and this is a hamski trinity and it's going to run you about 160 170 180 bucks for the rest which is getting up there in terms of price point i do not think that limb driven rests are for everybody and i've said that to people that have come to the shop people that have messaged me on facebook instagram or left a youtube comment i don't think limb driven rests are for everybody i don't think they're necessary for everybody now for somebody like me who's shooting thousands and thousands of arrows every single year and I shoot a lot of indoor outdoor hunting 3d the whole gambit something like a limb driven rest makes sense for me to drop that money on that rest and particularly the Trinity which is built so finitely there's three bearings that occur across the bar a lifetime warranty it has micro tune adjustments just a whole bunch of things that make somebody like me who shoots a lot of different types of arrows a lot of different types of bows I can take this uh, rest off I can easily tune it up for many different arrow setups both indoor outdoor hunting and I can put it on many different types of bows also unlike a cable actuated or a cable activated rest a limb driven rest is just as it implies, it's driven off the limb. Now, if there's anything on a bow that's going to do the exact same thing every single time, it's going to be the limb. And this is kind of the appeal of a limb-driven rest, that this limb is going to come in and it's going to come out the same way each and every single time. When you have something that's tied into your cable, your cable has flex to it. I can easily move this cable in and out. And when you're attaching an activation or an actuation cord to that cable, that down cable, that bus cable often, it could pull on a little bit and you're going to get some weird tension. Now, not that I said earlier, not that it makes really that much of a difference, I don't think, for hunting guys. If you're just shooting a hunting bow 20, 30 yards, I don't think it makes a hill of beans difference. But if you're trying to shoot indoor, like I said earlier, or you're trying to really hit some 11s and 12s on the 3D course and you have money on the line, I think shooting a limb-driven rest is probably your highest and best option because just the finite tunability and how quickly this clears out of the way. If you tune it right, you can tune it to many different angles. So so let's get into this a little bit more. I just dumped a lot of information, so let's talk a little bit more about limb-driven rests, how they operate, and why I think this is the best 
overall rest if you're going to be shooting thousands of arrows and for many different styles of archery. So a limb driven rest, this is like I said, this is a hamski. The, con the concept is that it is down the entire time. So you'll notice there is no launcher arm in the way at this particular moment in time. Now I'm going to let go of the tension here in this cord and you'll see that when it's not under tension, it is in its upright position. So when the limb flexes in, when this is under tension, when it flexes in, this rises up, picks up the arrow, and then as the limb goes down when the bow is shot, it clears out of the way under that tension. Hamsky uses a spring system so that not to add undue tension to this cable and to the side of the rest. I think that's really slick. Limb driven rests, like I said earlier, are going to fall exactly the same each and every single time. There's no tension to put in the cable. There's no weird activated actuation thing. It works just like a cable activated rest in the sense that it is dependent on something else moving. Cable activated is of course dependent on a cable moving. In this case, you're dependent on the limb moving for a limb driven rest or a limb activated rest. But I just, I don't know, there's just something about it. Now granted, this is a really high end rest and all the bearings that are put into it, the machining that's put into it, the warranty that's put into it, you're gonna get some really, really tight tolerances out of rest like this. And again, I do not think it's necessary for everybody to go drop 160, 70, 80 dollars on a rest. Now if you want a cheaper version of a limb driven rest than this, probably your next step down is Trophy Taker, or you could even look at the Gen 7 uh, Limb Driven Pro V from Vapor Trail. That's also a really really good option I've worked with all three of the rest trophy takers quality has kind of gone downhill in the past five or six years I think they kind of outsourced a lot of their machining or a lot of their parts uh, elsewhere they used to be really really solid in-house um, but now personally I would choose between vapor trail the gen 7 or the hamski uh, I just think they just they just do really high quality work and if you're in the market for a really high quality limb driven rest I don't think you can go wrong with either so I know that was a lot of information and be a little bit confusing and if I've left you with any questions, please leave them here on the comment section here on YouTube. You can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. My email is even down in the description if you want that more personal touch. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.